All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we are on part B. I hope that based on part A, that I got you started thinking. Because I don't want this to be just like a lecture. Again, I want this to try to be as close as possible to be a two-way conversation between you and I. I want to give you some time to think it over. I want to give you some wait time, some think time. So yes, in this video, I will be asking you questions because I want to stimulate your thinking process to try to see if you can project forward as to what you could do in order to solve this problem instead of me just giving a straight lecture and saying this is how you do it and just do this I don't like that I want to try to make this as helpful as possible make it a two-way conversation it's as close as possible give you time to think things over to see how you would approach it and then confirm your thought process with how I do it so now taking a close look at this Based on what we did in part A, how would you go about using that alternative definition to prove this? Think that over for a minute. Ralph, George, John, Raphael, Linda, think that over. Help the student out. I'll be right back. I'll give you time to think it over. Look at that problem. How would you use the alternative definition of absolute value to establish that this is indeed equal to that? And remember, all these pieces here are building up till we get to a little bit more advanced things of showing and proving the Swartz inequality. All these properties of absolute value are going to be vital because they're important in calculus, advanced calculus, and every place else that we're going to be proceeding. Think that over. So, where would you start? Give me some of your ideas. John. I hear you. Okay, your approach and analysis, that seems, I, I like that. Raphael? Okay, class, are we all in agreement? Student, have you arrived at the same conclusion that Raphael and John and Linda and them have arrived at? By email, let me know if you have. Alright, well, this is what they said that they would do, how they would use the alternative definition of absolute value. Well, first of all, again, we're going to use one of our key concepts, substitution. Here's how they said they will approach it. I have the absolute value of x times y. Now, remember, that product represents one quantity. Like 2 times 3 ends up giving you 6. So we're discussing one quantity here foundational concepts. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that quantity and I'm going to substitute it into that core alternative definition of absolute value. And I'm going to write this as the square root of x times y squared. Now that I did that, Algebraic properties can I apply to that because that's all that we're using here. Linda, uh, I would t I tend to agree with you. Ralph, do you agree with Linda? I see, yes. Student, what algebraic concept did you come up with that we could utilize to continue to move forward to getting here? Do you see that? Let me give you a hint. First of all, when there's no exponent here, what exponent is understood to be here and here? Maria. Very good. Do, do you agree with what Maria said? She said when there's no exponent here, it is understood to be 1. Correct the mundo. Do you recognize an algebraic concept that we can use here? Ah, yes. Here goes the concept. If I have a to the n raised to the nth power, I can write that as a to the n times n, and that's called raising a power. Raising a power to a power. 
Ladies and gentlemen, these algebraic concepts are vitally important because you're going to be using them over the whole traverse of our mathematical studies. So let's go ahead and apply that. It's almost like doing the distributive property over the exponents. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2. So, so far now, I can write this as the square root of x squared times y squared. What is the next step that I can apply? There's another algebraic property that I can use here. What do you think that is? Uh, Jose. Uh, I agree. Do you agree with Jose's assessment of the algebraic property that I can now apply to this? Did you get that? What was that? I see. Uh, Lauren? Let's see if all of you were correct. Well, they said that they could use this algebraic property. The algebraic property says the nth root of a to the m times b to the m can be written as the nth root of a to the m times the nth root of b to the m. I can separate those radicals, can I not? So, how do I apply this property, algebraic property, to that? Precisely, just separate it as it is here. Are we ready? Very good. So now, using that algebraic property, right here, we're going to separate this into the square root of x squared times the square root of y squared. Ah, uh, what do you see? Let's see. Uh, John, what do, what do you see here? Man, I gotta take you out and get you some Nathan's hot dogs. Very good. There's the rest of the class. Do you agree with him? All right, Nathan's hot dogs are everybody. Do you see what John saw? Hmm. Think that over for a minute. What are we almost there? Take a look at that problem. Think it over. What what does this mean? Isn't there something attached to that? Yes, there is. Very good. What do you say? I, I, okay, let's see. Are you ready? You sure? Okay, watch. Yes, by definition, we know that we now have the absolute value of x that is by direct definition times the absolute value of y. Very, very good. Please do not forget these. All of these pieces we're going to be going through, we're going to be using them in further advanced studies. So again, I'm doing this and stressing this, how important it is to understand all of these, because you will see this again if you go further into mathematics. Guaranteed. If there are any questions on these free videos on my site, please, Feel free to email me. Let me know if I did a good job in helping you to think through the analytical processes, the evaluative processes. Did I help to stimulate your brain to see how you would do it to give you some ideas of the path that you need to take? Let me know if I did a good job for you. Please. Once again, thank you for joining me, and I will see you in part C. It is so good to have you here. You are an enthusiastic, positive, uplifting student. Thank you so much. Please make sure that you pause the video, copy the work. If you need to, if you have not gotten that, please copy this right now. Pause your video right now and copy all of this work. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you. At this time, please pause your video, copy this work if you need to do so, and I will see you in Part C. Thank you so very much.